we take a look at our packet and we look at the last bits here. The very first three initial exercises, I've just put check marks. Since these are pretty easy ones, they're kind of warming you up. They take you back to using your basic momentum equation, your basic um, impulse equations that you did back in 5 1 exercises. Um, these middle three are all relatively long, um, but you're still expected to do them. You're going to follow the example we did in class with exercise number six. You're going to include your kinematics equations to take a displacement, an initial velocity, a final velocity, and get an acceleration from those. And then you're going to use that acceleration in your Newton's second law, F equals M A. And that will give you the force that they're asking for. In A7, you're looking at an explosion type of situation. And in A8, you're looking at an elastic collision. A9 is going to be an explosion style. A10 is going to be inelastic. And A11 is explosion. Here we have the USS Constitution, the oldest fully commissioned warship in the world, is docked in Boston, Mass. Also known as Old Ironsides for her seemingly impenetrable skull... Uh, skull <laughs> hull. The frigate houses 56 pieces of heavy artillery mounted on bearings that allow them to recoil. Recoiling is what the cannon does when it fires. It's going to pull back um, at a speed of 1.3 meters per second. Um, mounted on those bearings that allow them to recoil that speed are 20 carronades, each with a mass of 1,000 kilograms. If a carronade fires a 14.5 kilogram cannonball straight ahead with what muzzle velocity that's the speed that the cannonball comes out of the cannon does the cannonball leave the cannon you can read more about USS Constitution at that website all right I'm gonna take this away so we can start rocking out the guess method remember that the guess method is G U E S S G standing for our given information and so what given information do we have the 56 pieces of heavy artillery is extra we don't need to know that we do need the recoil speed of 1.3 meters per second um, that's the heavy artillery the carronade recoiling and so that's going to be after the shot after the explosion so that's going to be a final velocity so we have a vf and i'm going to put c for carronade and that's going to equal 1.3 zero meters per second. All right, then we're going to go to the next piece of information. It says there's 20 carronades, who cares? 20 of them, that's great. But each of them have a mass, the mass of the carronades, MC, of 1,000 kilograms. And kilogram is our SI unit, so we don't have to convert that. Now, if a carronade fires a 14.5 kilogram cannonball, I'm just going to put MB for ball. So I don't want to use C again for cannonball. And that has 14.5 kilograms of mass to it um, with what muzzle velocity does the cannonball leave the cannon so that's giving us our unknown now before I go ahead and write my unknown I have one more hidden given here that hidden given is what what is the initial velocity of the cannonball inside the cannon well initially they're not moving so we're gonna say hey you know what we got an initial velocity both of these are combined beforehand the cannonball inside the cannon they are one object so I could write VO, B, C to combine them, or I could just write VO, because there's only one VO. And that's going to be zero meters per second. All right, so what is unknown? They said, hey, uh, what is the muzzle velocity? How fast is that ball coming out of the gun? So that's going to be the final velocity of the ball, VFB equals question mark. We're going to find it in meters per second. Continuing in the guess method, Givens unknown equations the one equation, this is an explosion, so momentum is conserved. We're going to do PI equals PF. We're going to expand our equation. Um, that is the first S step. The first S step is where you solve your equation for your unknown. So I'm starting to solve it here by expanding it. My initial momentum, you can always expand it fully if you want to, but initially the masses were combined. So I'm going to say MB plus MC combo, put them in parentheses, um, and then you have your initial velocity that they had there together. Then I'm going to put my equal sign. I'm going to put expansions for my final. They're separated in the final, so I'm going to expand into two to things. I'm going to have the MB, and it's going to be multiplied by its final velocity of the ball, um, plus the mass of the cannon uh, times the final velocity of the cannon. But you got to realize they're going to be separated. So you know you got your cannon that's recoiling and your cannonball that is 
you know, going forward. So we're going to say, let's say that the cannonball, all right, has a positive momentum, and then the cannon itself is going to have a negative momentum. And that way I'll put a negative here. So I'm adding them together, but I'm still I'm adding a negative. So it's going to be subtracting the mass of the cannon. Here's our cannon. Here's our ball times the final velocity of the cannon. All right, now all that's left is to put in the numbers. VO is zero, so that slashes out, my favorite part, slashing, zero meters per second. And then that's gonna make this whole side zero kilograms times meters per second. Ha ha, very nice. And now we're gonna put in our mass B. It's gonna be 14.5 kilograms. We're gonna put in our final velocity uh, hey, that's what we're looking for, so we're just going to write that there, and then we're going to be subtracting out mc, which is 1,000 kilograms, and we're going to have a big old 1.3 meters per second for that bad boy, and now it's just down to simplifications, so 1,000 times 1.3 is going to be 1,300 kilogram times meters per second, or kilogram meter per second. Um, and then you're gonna have your 14.5 kilos times your VFB, you can leave your parentheses if you like, equals a zero kilogram time meter per second. Add 1,300 to both sides. For speed's sake, I'm not gonna write the units because I'm just, you can see them right there. And then we're going to have a 1, 1,300 kilogram meters per second equals 14.5 kilograms. Now it's all down to the calculator to get that final answer. You're just going to go, hey, over here, la di da. We're going to do divide both sides by 14.5. So your VFB is going to be a 1,300 kilogram meter per seconds divided by a 14.5 kilograms. Notice the kilograms cancel. You're going to end up with your meters per second per your unit and that's so awesome, wonderful, and nice uh, because that's what we want for a velocity. So what is that final answer? VFB is going to equal 1300 divided by 14.5 equals 89.65517 blah 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 we'll just leave it at 85.6 maybe we'll do a little another six on there um, and we'll put on the meters per second remember in physics you don't write numbers without finishing them with letters all right you guys are awesome you're all going to be amazing on these things so go forth and conquer happy physicsing